Grandma's Kitchen. There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Grandma's kitchen. And ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen. Hello everybody, Mary Janet here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons and welcome back and thank you very much for joining. And uh, it's a little, little overcast here today, but it's still good and it's not snow, so that's a good thing. I hope you had a wonderful week. Um, I know we were busy here with planting flowers and getting seeds for the garden because it's kind of late uh, that we're planting, but it's been an unusually cold start to the season. So uh, the songs that I was just playing there, uh, played them before for you, but it's from uh, Lisa Cameron. And Lisa has a beautiful album uh, called Unspoken that's available on iTunes. And Lisa is married to my nephew, Vern. And I love her music and they're all original tunes. And uh, she's just such a wonderful songwriter. So I wanted to, to play that for you. And today, 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 I'm just gonna take my apron off for a second. And I want to show you my t-shirt. Now, I'm not a big t-shirt lover at all because I don't like my arms and all of that stuff, you know. But I could certainly use, uh, and I am working on, on uh, eating healthier. But today I'm sporting this shirt from Caper Gym and Fitness in Inverness. And that's just down the road for me, maybe 25 minutes to get there. And of course, the beautiful logo that she has here and a little runner in the center of Cape Breton Island. And I wanted to support her. Uh, her name is Shirley Walker McLean from Inverness. And uh, she, uh, you know, inherited um, her, her dad's old home, which was, she, with very much reluctance, she, she uh, tore it down and, uh, because she couldn't use it for what she needed it for, and that was to build a gym and fitness center. And so she embarked on that with her husband, Conrad, who is a good friend of our family as well. And uh, she embarked on this uh, journey on building and making a beautiful facility. And actually there's a link to her new website on my website. Um, and anyway, uh, she's also in a course with me every Monday. We do online uh, social media program for beginners online and she's just a darling and I want to support her 100% in this venture. And uh, after all of this COVID uh, cooking and baking and the calories and all of that, we all have to be careful and me more than anyone. But uh, she's just got some great pro uh, programs there, memberships there for people who live in the local area. And you can even visit online. And she's got an online store with many products and, and uh, things. And actually there's going to be, uh, around three o'clock my time today, there's gonna to be a post on my website that's scheduled uh, for a little contest uh, for Father's Day. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we have our tea a little later on, but you'll see the post uh, come up around three o'clock. But uh, this, is, this is just one of the items uh, that, that she has in her store. There's lots of t-shirts, and uh, but just things like this. You know, I know you guys love Cape Breton, and she's got some lovely other things too, like really 
nice clothing, sporty clothing to go along with it. And this t-shirt is exactly the same. So anyway, good luck to you, Shirley, and as you uh, live through this, these hard COVID times. And I just hope everybody will be out there and support her and like her page and all of that. And that's part of the contest. And uh, the winner is going to get uh, a t-shirt, uh, a certificate for a t-shirt at her uh, facility and an apron from me. And there's a riddle too, but more on that a little later on. So today we're going to be making German apple cake. And I know so many things that I make are family favorites, but for Cecil and I, this is our family favorite. And it's my go-to dessert if we're maybe having company in. The kids don't like anything with raisins in it, so I never made it for them. And you can make it, if you're one of those that don't like raisins, you can make it without the raisins. So um, just use the apples, but oh gosh, it's so good with the raisins in it, but it's, it's a preference, a personal preference. Mitchell had an idea. Why don't you, after you get every, all the batter in the, in the, in the pan, uh, why couldn't you just drop the raisins in on just one side and push them down? God knows he might be right. Maybe he could do that. And so it would be half for them and half for us. So we'll see. So what else do I have to say before I uh, start? Um, I want to wish my niece, uh, Natalie McMaster, a happy belated birthday. Her birthday was yesterday. And uh, she's a, a dear heart. And uh, I want to wish her. Uh, and I know she had a wonderful birthday. There were... Everybody was sending her greetings and the family were sending her special videos. And so that was really a lot of fun. And um, another special birthday coming up this week on Friday. It's our son Gordy's birthday. He's already got over the 40 last year. So happy 41st birthday, Gordy. I love you. And I, he's not home. Of course, he's going to be working in, uh, out there in Fort McMurray until maybe the end of June or no, a little bit longer. So uh, have a happy birthday and hi to all the rest of the kids. Anyway, oh yes, and I want to say congratulations to my grandson Jake for graduating. Uh, they had their little prom party and it was so cute to get some of the pictures from that. Okay, enough about my family. You get, better get started because we had to do two sessions today. This session, when I put it in the oven, and then I'll come back for part two, because we have to do the topping that goes on top of the hot cake and back into the oven to make it just right. So let's do this. I'm just gonna go wash my hands and turn the oven to 350, okay? I'm telling you, it's great to have a big family because I wouldn't be able to do that <laughs> without them. Uh, my son Brennan was on the phone with me. We were figuring things out. Just we have such poor internet in this part of, of Cape Breton Island. It is so brutal. The upload speed, it's less than 1.0. So I have to use data to do this today just because I've been having so much trouble. So I hopefully it comes through to you loud and clear. And I hope I'm speaking loud enough uh, that everyone can hear me. So um, set my oven and wash my hands. And uh, well, now what next? I guess I'm just gonna get right into the recipe. And there's other reminders on there that I'll tell you as we go. And in my little box here. So we're gonna start with three eggs, so just Put three eggs in the bowl, okay? Some of you might, you know, have have the equipment to, to mix this with uh, whatever you call them, food processors or whatever. I just 
do it the old-fashioned way. Someday, 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 I might have one of those when I can't stir anymore. And I'm going to use a whisk for this part. So I'm just going to whisk up the eggs. This is such, such an easy recipe. It really is. Now, hopefully that doesn't go down into the eggs, and it doesn't. And you're going to have one cup of oil. Of white sugar. My half cup measure, so it'll be four of these. Okay, and just stir that up. Now the recipe should be posted. Daughter Tammy out there in Fort Mac is going to be posting the recipe. And my son was going to be posting it on the website. stay there. Now, uh, vanilla. One teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to use the half. I usually just use the cover. I'm trying to be good. And we're going to use the half cup measure because I don't want to get the, uh, the one teaspoon one wet because I have to put the soda in there. Okay, so just stir that up. Smells good already. That vanilla is the Watkins. The hand soap I used was Watkins. The link is on my page. And the gal that sells that is from Mabu. And remember last week I was talking to you, put my Tupperware bowl. Now, uh, found out there's a gal in Mabu and she's my cousin that she sells Tupperware. So I put her link on with my links and her name's Natasha Phillips. And uh, just, I, I added her name there and uh, I love Natasha. She's got this wild red, beautiful hair. And uh, so she's selling Tupperware and she's a young mom and two beautiful little fellas. And uh, so anyway, anybody local? And I know there's a gal that was mentioned last week in one of the comments who's in Inverness who is selling Tupperware and I don't remember her name and I was gonna get it today and I, and I didn't catch it. But anyway, I'm sure somebody will comment on that, but uh, kudos to her too and to support local. That's what we're trying to do in these times. All right, so now we're ready for the dry ingredients, and I didn't take the bowl out, so just hang tight for a second. Okay, so I need two cups of flour. cups of flour, two teaspoons, well one teaspoon of soda, we'll start with that. And two teaspoons of cinnamon.
and there's no salt so just stir that around now this recipe also what's optional is a half a teaspoon of mace and I know I have it in the cupboard somewhere but I don't can't couldn't find it quick enough before the show started so if you want to add that that's optional if you if you like mace and you have it in sometimes these spices can be so expensive but I do have it but you know it's fine if you don't have it all right and that's that's everything so oh no I'm not going to use the whisk I'm going to use this you know how I'm, I know I'm always promoting everybody's stuff to you but these things help in your kitchen look at this it is so strong this is pampered chef I, I just got it this week and I just love it already I made stuff already with it so I'm gonna be mixing it all the dry ingredients in there this this uh, spatula is the large one they have a medium-sized one too and they have a a smaller one like a, a scraper one or something it's called I forget but uh, oh the other thing I ordered I really splurged and I never told Cecil how much I paid for it do you guys do that do you do you, do you order things and you don't you don't tell me your husband what you paid for it oh my god it was so expensive it is absolutely wonderful it's a non-stick skillet I think it might be 10 inches, I'm not sure. But honest to God, I get so tired of these frying pans that say they're non-stick and they're wonderful and great for a while. Anyway, this one is heavy and it's got a cover and it's gorgeous and it's expensive, but I've had such a good history with Pampered Jeff that I'm just gonna keep on buying it. What I need, I, I have a lot, I love what I have. Okay, so that's the batter, but you have to now prepare the rest of it, the apples and the raisins, okay? So I'm gonna get the apples over here. Get that out of your way, I think that you can see that. Now you're going to use three Granny Smith apples. They're the best apples. And if you don't have them, use, use what you have. And you, we're going to peel them, of course. And uh, we're going to wedge them. I'm just doing everything the same time as you. I know you, uh, I'm a little slower than everybody. Anybody else that does videos. But I'm doing it with you in real time so that we can do this. So three, three of these apples, doesn't take long. Now I have one of those gadgets. I don't know where I got it. You know, I probably got this at the dollar store, you know, one of those things. You don't need that. What that's great for is if you make that beautiful crunchy apple dip with the cream cheese and you put red and green apples all around the edges and the cream cheese and the score bar of course everything you like is calories but we now have a treadmill in our house gone for a walk once this week outside and then tried the treadmill out i can do this and if there's anybody else out there the same idea you can do it too and you know what we just have to do that and it's all about quantity and, you know, have a small slice of something instead of having second helpings. <laughs> I just love to bake and anyway, we'll get there. Okay. So this... Uh, this little cutter will, will core it. That's what I like most of all. And it will, it will wedge it, but
but I'm still, I find the wedge is too thick and I'll cut each wedge in half. So that's way too thick. I'm gonna cut that in half and put them in just like that in that whole wedge, okay? Now, where I live, where I live, and I mean, I know there's some local people that join in all the time too. Um, I live in Port Hood and I'm about 10 kilometers from the community of Judic. And uh, there's a, a gal in Judic, Sharon Nicholson, oh my God, is it McDonald's? Scared, I forgot her last name. McCachran, 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 sorry, McCachran. Anyway, I know she sells Epicure. I don't have all the information there. I'm going, um, I swear I'm gonna order something from her because I have a lot of Epicure spices and mixes and stuff like that. But all these people, everybody's, you know, loving to, to have a little, online business at this time and it's great to have them there but Sharon if you're watching I'm, I'm gonna place an order soon because I've been looking okay last apple Mitchell was here before, trying to make everything right for me so that I'd be sideways on here and that the table would be the right height. So, I'm so appreciative. Thank you, Mitchell. I know he's out there somewhere. I don't know what he's got on today. He won't be here to sing today, but... Okay. Hope you're here with me right now. So we've got all our apples in the batter and we're gonna add one cup of raisins for those who are adding raisins, okay? I'm gonna use my half cup measure. These raisins, they're no name raisins or whatever, Thompson, those Thompson raisins, they're great. That, my friends, is it. So, we're gonna mix that up really well. Just kind of fold it over until it's nicely mixed. I just love that there's people out there that, you know, I, hear, I, I get these private messages. I won't mention any names. I know there's lots out there that, you know, they're career people. They don't bake, really and sometimes afraid to bake. And some of them are baking, like they've never really baked before, and afraid to bake or make bread or whatever. And, and you know, it's so darn easy. And they're being brave enough to try it with me and they're having success. And isn't that wonderful? I'm so proud of you that you're doing that because it's hard when you buy all the ingredients and all of that. So now we're gonna prep our pan. Okay, so I have here, what I put out there was a nine inch spring form pan. If you have any other pan, where's my, I have a tube, I have a tube pan here. Don't use a tube pan. I did that before and it's brutal. You, you, you can't use it. Mine even even comes out, the center comes out and it's it's a non-stick or whatever. It, it's so hard to get the cake out of that. It's it's just really difficult. I, I wouldn't use a two point tube pan for that. If you don't have a spring form pan that has the spring on here, um, 
I just use a maybe a 9 by 13 I'm not sure how much the batter will fill uh, this is the best investment this one's a 9 inch I don't know what company I got it from I don't think it was Pampered Chef I think it would have the name on it it has no name on it but um, it might have been Tupperware it might have been Epicure I don't know what they sell I don't think it's Pampered Chef but um, this way when it's when the cake is as absolutely cold and room temperature only then and then and only then do you take it and unlock the spring and take it off and it, it's just it's perfection so right now we're going to put some parchment paper on the bottom all I do is do this and I draw a circle around You've seen me do this before, I know. And I know y'all think I'm probably crazy with my addiction to parchment paper, but it is the best invention. What I like it most is if I'm preparing supper and I'm preparing like pork chops or chicken. And uh, no matter if you have like a Pamper Chef stoneware, pan or whatever I uh, put parchment paper on it and all of those bits that just you know delicious bits that are left over from meat they're on the parchment paper and they're not stuck and you're not scrubbing your pan okay just like that do you know what yeah I think I will spray around the edge just a little bit I wasn't planning on doing that I forgot I'll just spray it around you can brush and if you want to just brush with with butter and you know do your dusting with flour you go for that too or if you have parchment and you know that's it okay I'm gonna put my batter in here Okay, and just kind of just move it around to the edges is all. You don't, don't worry if the apples are not covered with batter or anything like that, just get it in there. And we're gonna put that in the oven, okay? And it's gonna stay in the oven for one hour, okay? One hour exactly. It may take an hour and five minutes, but the thing of it is, right after I put this in the oven, we're gonna make the topping. We're not gonna to use the topping just now, but the topping is, is a cream cheese frosting, really, is what it is. And if you are familiar with German apple cake, and you know, many of the recipes have just a cream cheese frosting on it at the end of the day. What's different about this one, this German apple cake recipe, is that you bake your cake and then you put your cream cheese frosting on the cake when it comes out of the oven and you put it back in the oven for about 20 minutes to caramelize. And it's just, it's different and it's delicious and it's wonderful. So, um, I, uh, that's, that's it. I'm just going to put this in the oven now and set my timer for 60 minutes. Okay, I'll be right back. All right. So, now we're going to make the cream cheese frosting just so that it's going to be done. 
I mean, I could come back at the end of the hour and we could mix it up then, but we might as well just do it right now. Because when I come back, I'll come back live when uh, the hour is up and we'll, we'll put the frosting right on the hot cake, put it back in the oven for the 18 or so minutes. And during that time is when we'll have our little visit and a cup of tea. And of course, I made this cake on Tuesday and gave some of it away, but I've kept one slice that's been waiting for me in my fridge. I made it on Wednesday and uh, I'm gonna have cup of tea and a piece of German apple cake while we have our little visits. So unfortunately you can't do that because yours will be too hot. So, uh, but no, you, you'll know what I mean. And it, it really is delightful. Now this cream cheese, you can just, you know, your regular brick of cream cheese, whether it's the regular kind or it's light kind, I just buy whatever's on sale or whichever is the cheapest, really. Um, and uh, this one, it's just, a, it's a, it's a co-op Sobeys brand. My, it's called Compliments. All right. So what's in here? I better find my recipe here. Okay, here we go. So, package of cream cheese, two tablespoons of butter, I'm just, you know, tablespoon of butter, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Two teaspoons of vanilla. This recipe, I was telling you, it's in that cookbook that the twins and I put together way back in the 90s. The same one that I was talking about last week with Janelle and of course, none of it, no, it's not available anymore, but in that, in that cookbook was this recipe and the Rankin family were one of the ones that submitted the recipe, so. And a little dash of salt, I'm just going to, a pinch for the flavor. And two cups of icing sugar. Put, dump everything in together. We're good, we're good now. Where did I put that? Oh gosh, this is very full. I'll make a mess. Okay. That's one. Have to count out loud. One and a half. That's two. And I'm just gonna have an electric beater. And I've gotta, I, I'm sorry, I can't continue if I've made a mess. I've gotta clean it up. There, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Got some mess on my hands. And I need, I need this. And yes, I'm gonna make some noise. <laughs> All right.
just like that, you have beautiful cream cheese frosting. Okay, I'm just gonna set that aside. So, I'll be back in about 50 minutes. I'll come back online and I will see you then. And uh, is there anything that I should be telling you? I don't think so. I'll be back and we'll have a visit then. And all the things I forgot to tell you, I will tell you. What I am going to do while, you, while I'm gone is I have some whipping cream in my fridge. I'm going to whip up a little bit of whipping cream and I'm going to serve that with, um, with my serving of the German apple cake. And you know what else is really good? Which I do have a little bit left off my caramel sauce. I'm just going to give it a little drizzle of that, the, the, the warm sauce. I'm going to just zap it for 20 seconds. And uh, I will show you that serving. And uh, it's going to be good. And we'll have our tea. Okay, see you later. Hi, welcome back. Thank you for coming back to me. I, um, my beeper went, so the time is almost up. I'm just going to check it with the, uh, the cake tester, but I'm pretty sure it'll be fine because we're actually going to be putting it back in for another 18 minutes. So if you think the, the middle is kind of iffy, don't worry about that. You'll still, if there, there's still an, a, a, you kind of have a harder crust on uh, by the time it's done the second time. So it's just part of the recipe. So I'm just going to go to my oven and I'm going to check this now and I'll be right back. Looks perfect. Hope yours looks like this too. It raised up really nicely. Uh, I couldn't wait to come back. That's awesome. I didn't clean up my dishes because I was so busy reading the messages. I just love that. You know what? I, I really feel like we're really having a visit. You know how when you know that there's somebody coming to the house and you're going around and you're cleaning everything up and the key to the counter, cleaning the dishes, sweeping the floor, putting everything the way you want them to see <laughs> everything. And I was doing that before the show and I was thinking, oh, I'm having company. So thank you for coming for a visit. So right now I'm going to put the topping on, put it all over the hot cake, right fresh out of the oven. It'll be pretty full. That's just the way it is. Oh my God. It's delicious. Okay, we're gonna put this right back in the oven. And it'll kind of get kind, it won't get brown. The edges will, you'll see they'll be caramely and and the frosting itself will kind of get maybe a little translucent that's what I would call it and it's just the nice finishing touch so back in for 18 minutes but I'm going to stay with you because I got my tea on
So I'll show it to you when it comes out of the oven. All right, now we're gonna go and uh, have a little cup of tea. And I'm gonna bring you around this way and we'll have tea together. Oh, there's Cecil. Hi, Cecil. Hello. <laughs> I won't be done for another 20 minutes. Yep, okay. yep, you can do that. Okay. See you on Father's Day. <laughs> Okay, I hope that works. Now, there, I'll push you around with this. So, as I said, I've saved myself a piece. So, I have a little bit of caramel, a little bit of whipped cream. I whipped up a little bit of whipped cream and I put in it um, about a teaspoon of vanilla. Um, yes, the recipe should be online and um, uh, the um, all the ingredients are, are, are in the recipe, of course, and I, it's on Facebook page a couple of times. My daughter Margie has posted it on the, the feed of the first video, so you should be able to get that there. So yes, Cecil is camera shy; he doesn't want to be in front of the camera. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So what all do I have to say today? Let me have a, a look at this again. So, um, the CD, again, it's Lisa Cameron. CD is unspoken and it's un available on iTunes. And, and uh, oh, just, I love her music. And uh, Caper Jim. I wanted to reiterate about Caper Jim because uh, I really want to support Shirley in her, you know, launch of, of her gym. It has been open, but of course it had to close during COVID. But she has made leaps and bounds in all of these COVID times to make it accessible and to utilize uh, a space that she had before that were just for lessons. But she's actually put some of the equipment downstairs so that it's accessible uh, and having the distancing uh, between everybody that's there. So. Once that is all ready, sh that website and her Facebook page will allow uh, everyone to know what's happening. But you can also visit her online store. She's got some dandy stuff on there. And uh, I, think, I, I think we should all just really think local. Now, the recipe, this recipe that we're making today, it's also, I told you already, it's a favorite of Cecil's and it's a favorite of mine and it'll be a great cake for Father's Day next weekend. Speaking of Father's Day, next Sunday I'm going to be live from a different location and it's so exciting. It's um if you go to uh oh I'm after forgetting the website name, but it's it's Cape Breton Villas. I believe it's .ca, but I really have to look at that while I'm talking to you. I'll look it up. But it's, it's these beautiful villas that are owned by a family from right here in Port Hood. And it's down in beautiful Inverness and um, oh, uh, Deepdale area. And it's the, the former home of their uh, grandmother, of, of Mary Morris's grandmother. And she used to love to, to bake for her family. And so I've picked uh, an old recipe that she used to love. Sorry, all you raisin folks, but it's bread pudding is what I'm going to be making. And you know what it's good with? Guess what? That caramel sauce. <laughs> so it's got a lot of uses, that caramel sauce recipe. But, uh, or, or if you like br bread pudding by itself and, and alone and just with some whipped cream. But, um, what I'd like to say is that uh, I'll be making the bread pudding from there. And just this last week, our local paper, the Inverness Oran, uh, they have an online subscription and they have paper copies. It's a weekly paper. 
And they did an article on tunes and wooden spoons. And the, the, uh, the editor who, who uh, interviewed me when he published it, he mentioned that I was going to be on site at the, the Cape Breton Villas next Sunday. Guess what he told everybody in the paper that I was making? Blood puddings. Not this chick. I know there's people out there that love their Maddox and Maddocans, which is Gaelic for an oatmeal white pudding. And there's those that love their traditional Scottish breakfast with a blood pudding that's fried up. Don't like blood pudding, sorry. And I would definitely not be making it. So just that one correction. No, there's two corrections. One correction is I'm making bread pudding, which you will need. Uh, white bread is preferable. Raisins, eggs, sugar. Let me find my recipe here. You'll need uh, six slices of day-old bread, a little bit of melted butter, four beaten eggs, some raisins, milk, some white sugar, cinnamon, and vanilla. That's all you'll need, and you'll need an 8x8 eight eight pan. Or if you want to double it, make it in a 9x13 pan. That's fine. I'll be making it in an 8x8 eight eight pan, so the, the, the ingredients, you'll have to double it if you want to put it in a big pan. Um, <clears throat> the other little error <laughs> that was in the Oren article, they said that... Um, I got the idea from my eldest daughter, Margie. Well, she took that in the nose. Tammy is the oldest daughter. Margie is the third oldest. And uh, and anyway, it, it was pretty comical to hear her reaction. What? They said I was the oldest? I'm not the oldest. <laughs> but anyway, she's not the oldest. Oops. Okay. Now, I want you to look at something I received this week. I know it's backwards, but it says tunes and wooden spoons. It is, isn't that just so perfect? And it sits right here on my china cabinet, my little itty bitty china cabinet. It was made by Kathy McMillan from Edmonton, Alberta, and we have a special connection. Kathy's daughter, Amy, is the girlfriend of my son, Gordy. And uh, I've never met her in person, but certainly have seen her on, on FaceTime. And uh, so I'm very proud of, of that. It's, it really connects us, even though someday we'll get to meet. And uh, so anyway, I wanted to give a big shout out to her and your, her nickname is Crafty Kathy. She makes everything. So uh, she actually, I'm gonna show you something else that, not that she made, but she gave me the idea. She used a bunch of old hardcover books and painted them white, you know, Painted the spines white, you know. I just got them at at the uh, uh, secondhand store in Inverness, where you can get secondhand books. That uh, the uh, community down there run that. And she had she had it done and decorated for Christmas, and it said "Jingle All the Way" on the words. Now I just have some Gaelic expressions on there. And we gave that to our children for Christmas. They each got a set of three. There was a lot of painting for seven kids. And then, of course, the reject I had to keep myself. I got all the letters and the stamp and all of that at Michael's. But of course, I, I made a mess of the stamping on this one. But I get it to keep on my coffee table. So anyway, that's that. But that... That was from Crafty Kathy. So thank you, Kathy, very, 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 very much. Um, the contest. There's a few entries already. I've been seeing them popping up. And you know what? There, people are thinking it's an obvious answer, but the ones I've seen are not correct. 
sorry, bust your bubble, but have another look. Who is in the photograph? That's the clue. Who is in the photograph is the question. So there's a man looking at the photograph. And there's a friend with him. He doesn't really enter into the picture, but the fellow looking at the photograph, who, what picture is he looking at? That's, that's all I'll say. So all of those contest rules are on there. And next Sunday, next Saturday, before Father's Day, I'll be um, checking in with Shirley Walker McLean uh, to say, okay, I, these are all the people that entered. Did they all like your page? And if they did, then they're going to be included in the draw. And then I'll take a video off me doing the random draw and uh, you're picking your name and if you had the answer right. So that's it. And since somebody else, uh, oh my gosh, there's so many nice people. I was just loving reading the recipe, uh, reading the comments and whatever, you know, people from PEI and people from all over Cape Breton and Christmas Island. Hello, Christmas Island. And just, you know, Texas. Hi, Trika and Dana and Barbados. Like, this is crazy and it's so nice. So thank you all so much. But one person was asking me, I had mentioned the apple dip before. Well, you know that apple dip recipe? That was something, oh, 15 or 20 years ago when Tammy was in Pamper Chef, when they did the house parties, they would come to your house and you just had to buy the ingredients and they would make um, uh, one of their recipes using their products. So at that time, there was a, and they're probably still on, on, on the, on the uh, website, it was a, a mini baker uh, it was a stoneware product and hi North Carolina I saw that um, it was a baker and you you put the ingredients in and then you baked it in the oven in this little baker thing I've adapted it over the years and I, and I don't bake it anymore I just leave it in its raw form and I promised that I would tell you how it was made so basically you have to have your cream cheese really at room temperature like really stirrable right and you're gonna have an, a nice round plate, like a nice big plate like that. And you put, you put the cream cheese, coat it with the cream cheese. And then over the top of that, you put, we can't, uh, it's not available, I don't know, and I don't know if it's not available in the world anymore, but Sheriff used to make this product. It's been a long time since I made it. Um, but Sheriff used to have this spreadable caramel spreadable caramel it's not like the sauce that or the, the the nice sauce that you would put on ice cream but but it's a, a spreadable uh caramel i've never seen another product that would equal it there is a spread now uh that is called it's usually found in the fruit section and it's like an apple dip that'll do but it's not the same as the old sheriff uh, caramel spread you can, if you Google Sheriff, S-H-I-R-I-F-F, -F, caramel spread, you'll see a picture off, off, the, uh, off the tub that it used to be in. And it was, oh my God, so good. And you would, anyway, spread that. Anyway, if you find it where you are, spread that all over or something equally like that, all over your cream cheese onto that plate. Then those score bar, not the score bar bits, Yes, you can use that, but it's not as good. I'm telling you right now, you need that bit of chocolate. And cut up a bunch of the, of the score bars, chop them all up, spread them over the top of that caramel. And then you get Granny Smith apples and some nice red apples, and you wedge them like the big wedges that we made before. Leave the peeling on, wash it all off, leave the peeling on, and, and make sure the point of the... Um, of the apple wedge is pointing down so that the red skin is above. And all around the edge of the dish, you put red and green and red and green and red and green all the way around. You don't heat it up and you just take a wedge and you, you dip it in. No double dipping, as we know. But 
it's such a pretty presentation to take anywhere, not just at Christmas, but especially at Christmas, but anytime, if we ever get to have a gathering again. I love the Celtic Colors idea of getting together. Wouldn't that be fun? One thing that I would love to do, and I'm thinking of so many of the local people around Cape Breton or whatever, and I was thinking, gosh, wouldn't it be nice in the summertime for us to get together at a here in Port Hood somewhere, uh, you know, and, and just have tea and something sweet and just chat in person. I would love that. I was thinking, I know our museum in Port Hood, it's, it's a small uh, venue and it has about seating about for 30 people. I don't know how many people would be interested, but I was thinking, I wonder if we could do something like that and have like, little tables up set up, but wouldn't be able to hold 30. But say if we had 20 or 25 people, I'd go in a flash and be there and make cinnamon rolls and we'd have a good cup of tea and some good real conversation back and forth. Um, anyway, so next week, you know what you're making. And I think, I think that's, I think I've covered almost everything that I wanted to talk about. And my tea, oh my God, it's almost boiling. I left it too long. Just hold on a second. So I, um, I, I put the whipping cream inside my cake decorator and I looked and it was a Pampered Chef cake decorator from many, many years ago. They don't even make it anymore. They've changed to a, a, a bag. And then I put my caramel sauce in this little thing that I got from Epicure. It was really for chocolate and to warm in the microwave if you're decorating. But I put my caramel sauce inside and I drizzled it. So I don't know if they make it anymore. Everything I have is old, but <laughs> it, it just makes a nice idea if you want to decorate. Okay, I'm gonna have a bite. Little whipped cream, little sauce. Mmm. 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 I'm sorry for the people that don't like raisins, but that just makes it. It almost reminds me sometimes of those that boiled raisin cake that um, we used to make. I'm going to make that sometime. I have a recipe from um, my sister. Bernice gave it to me, and it's from our cousin, Mary Pat formerly from Mabu, lives in Antigonish, and uh, she, it's the best recipe. So it's a, it's a war cake slash boiled raisin cake. I'm gonna make that someday. Okay, 18 minutes is up, I'm gonna go check.
Okay, people. So, mine, this time, for whatever reason, it has, you know, dripped a bit, but it doesn't matter. Hopefully, you, uh, where's my knife? Here it is. You just, okay, I've got to turn the camera around here so you can see it. It's kind of awful messy looking. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. Leave it in the, in, in, in the, can you see that? Oh. Okay. So you just leave it in this pan until it cools. All of that delicious looking stuff, although it looks messy, it'll only make it that much more delicious. Just leave it in the pan. Don't take it out of don't take it out of the pan. Leave it in there till it's cold. Oh, it smells so good. And you can eat all those bits. And I have in my oven one of those um, sheets, those I don't know if it's a silicone sheet or whatever, but you put it in the oven and it catches all the drippings from your spring form pan. And I mean, maybe some of you have um, a 10 inch one, maybe that would be better. But it, it, it'll settle down, after you take it out of the oven, it'll settle down and it'll, it'll just, it's not gonna be puffed up like that and it'll be fine. But before you open the spring form, take a knife and go all around the edges so that when you you know, un unhook when you open the spring clasp, and uh, it's it's going to be just beautiful. But make sure you leave it and let it cool in the pan. Don't think that you have to take it out or open the clasp. Just leave it. Anyway, that is it. I didn't even take a, a sip of tea yet. This is a beautiful musical cup and saucer. Isn't that nice? I think this is also another cup and saucer I got from Janie. Janie, if you're out there, uh, I have a low battery. But anyway, Janie, if you're out there, thank you. It's a super big, big cup, but it's, it's wonderful. So I hope those who made it with me that it came out nicely for you too. And uh, it's fine on its own. You don't need the whipped cream or the caramel sauce, but just if you wanted to make it look kind of special, it's, it's really, really, really nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm seeing some entries popping in there on my, on my uh, page, uh, on, the, on my phone, I can see it. So I really hope you'll enjoy me next week. Don't we all need a nice vacation after all this? And I'm thinking that those villas, I'm gonna look that name up before I sign off. I'm gonna find it on here so that I'm not giving you the wrong information. It's Cape Breton Villas, plural, dot com. And you'll see these beautiful, there's four, four beautiful buildings. I don't know if you can see that. Four beautiful villas. And, and two of them have two bedrooms and I think there's one that might have three and one is like um, an office and, and, and an apartment space. Over looks uh, beautiful in Verness and it's part of the golf course that's uh, down there. And um, you know what? Maritimers, we need to treat ourselves to a weekend like this. And they're, they, these are luxury uh, villas, you know, and uh, it would be just a treat to, to have a couple of couples get together and treat themselves after all of this is over. So I'll be live from there next Saturday and we'll do a little tour while the bread pudding is baking and you have all your ingredients. I'll post them and I'll post a picture of um, 
I'll post a picture of the uh, of the bread pudding so that you'll have that. And again, on Caper Gym, uh, all of you wonderful people, yes, we're all going to have to either go on diets or get really uh, fit, and uh, <laughs> we'll we'll uh, have to support Shirley in her wonderful work in uh, wanting to help people with their fitness and with their uh, plans to uh, to be a better you. So anyway, thank you all again for always joining in. I really do appreciate it and I think you are all wonderful. One day we will be together and have tea in person, I'm sure. And uh, just love one another. Love ya. Bye-bye. Hi everybody, Mary Janet here. Thanks so much for watching. I would love if you would hit subscribe, please. And if you'd like to order an apron, you can go to tunesandwoodenspoons.com. Uh, the link is down there in the description. So thanks so much and happy baking.